Welcome to Handcrafted Woodworks. My name is Daniel, and today I'm going to show you how I built this inexpensive jointer and surface planer stand for my benchtop jointer and planer. This will be a two part series, and in this video, we will be building the carcass. Alright, the first thing you need to do is measure your tools to find their dimensions. The critical dimension here is the height of your outfeed tables. I designed this stand so the infeed and outfeed tables would be about 31 inches tall, which is a comfortable working height for me. Now you can decide whether you want to build the base just big enough to cover the footprint of your tools, or if you want a larger base that is equal to or greater than your tools with their outfeed and infeed tables in their working positions. I chose to build mine with a slightly larger footprint, mainly to help protect the jointer tables so they don't bump into the wall when I roll the stand up against it for storage. My overall footprint ended up being 37 inches by 48 inches. I figured I could use the extra space for storage later on, which we will cover in part 2 of this series. I bought two sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood for the carcass portion. I had the big box store rip it down to 37 inches wide, which was slightly larger than my in-feed and out-feed tables in their working positions. I really wish I spent the extra money to buy Baltic birch plywood instead, but I figured I'd save a couple bucks and build it out of the less expensive stuff. I'm sure there will be a second series in the future where I revisit this build and hopefully remake it out of some nicer materials. Since the width was pre-cut, I only had to focus on the lengths. Here you see me marking out my predetermined lengths on the second sheet. I marked them all slightly oversized so I could refine them on the table saw. The veneer on this plywood was super splintery, so I taped over my cut lines to hopefully prevent massive tear out. I then remarked my cut lines on the tape so I didn't undercut any of my pieces, and then cut them all down. Since I don't have a track saw, I used a straight edge guide and my circular saw for the cross cuts. Off camera, I measured the distance from my blade to the edge of my circular saw plate. I then added that measurement to my initial one to know where to place my straight edge. Here you see me double checking myself. Using my combination square, I squared up the straight edge to the pre-cut side of the plywood. I then clamped down my straight edge and got to cutting. I repeated the process until I had rough cut all my pieces. Once all of my cuts were done, I thought it would be a good time to clean up before making even more of a mess. As you can see, my garage is fairly empty and my tools are on the floor. I'm drafting some plans for a new workbench outfeed table combination. It's going to have tons of storage and my table saw is going to be built in. I have a lot of other projects on the list and I'm super excited to share the builds with you guys. If you want to follow along, please like, subscribe and leave a comment, let me know what ideas you have for this garage and for any future builds you want to see.
Once I got my table saw set up, I cut all of my pieces down to their final dimensions. I chose to cut rabbits into the base to attach the two sides of the carcass. I found the width of the rabbit by measuring the thickness of the plywood using a combination square. It helps to use a couple pieces of scrap wood to find this width. I then traced that width down the two sides of my base where I wanted my rabbit. I used my combination square with the depth measurement to set up my palm router. Again, I used my combination square to find the distance from the quarter inch straight cut bit to the edge of my base plate, making sure to take this measurement from the cutting edge of the bit. I used this measurement to set up my straight edge guide and then got to routing out the rabbit. Routing always makes a huge mess, so I did another quick cleanup. Now it was time for assembly and unfortunately my camera kept dying during the assembly process so I was only able to capture bits and pieces. It's probably for the better though because this one gave me some issues. It was a simple glue up but my clamps kept getting jammed, my cut pieces were bowed and I messed up by clamping with the concave side towards my glue edge. If I had clamped the bowed pieces with the convex side down towards the glue edge the boards would have acted as their own clamps and would have made the process way easier. Either way, the piece still came together. After assembling the sides with glue and screws, I attached both surfaces which the jointer and planer will sit on.
After those were attached, I hammered in the center support and attached it in the same fashion. I attached six heavy duty casters to this build. I put two in the center of the bottom portion to help prevent sagging in the future. There was absolutely no racking in this assembly, but later on I might attach a couple of back stretchers to ensure it stays that way. Thank you all so much for watching. Come see me back here for part two of the series where we will be building some drawers and finishing this shop project.